Welcome back to Arsenal 23. My name's Seth. So today we're going to be testing 38 Special versus 357 Magnum. Now both of these cartridges today are going to come from Hornady Critical Defense. For our 38 Special we've got a 110 grain FTX projectile and for our 357 Magnum it's going to come in a little bit heavier to 125 grain FTX projectile. Now a lot of you guys might already know the 357 Magnum is going to be a lot more powerful than the 38 Special. But is that increase in power going to make a significant difference in a personal defense scenario? That's the question we intend on answering today. Now the gun we're going to be using is a Colt Python with a 6 inch barrel. Now I would have liked to have used a gun with a shorter barrel length between that 2 inch to 4 inch mark. But until somebody wants to start sending guns to Arsenal 23, we're just going to use what we have. So we've already covered the history of the 357 Magnum and the 38 Special in prior videos. But we've never covered them together and it's been quite a while since we've done it. So let's go ahead and recap the history of the iconic 357 Magnum and the legendary 38 Special and then we'll go ahead and put these rounds through some tests. So we'll start with the 38 Special. The 38 Special was developed by Smith & Wesson and introduced in 1898 as an improvement over the 38 Long Colt, which proved to be inadequate as a service round following the Spanish-American War and subsequent insurrections. The 38 Long Colt wasn't quite powerful enough to punch through the shields of the insurgent Philippine warriors, so the government contracted with Smith & Wesson to develop a new cartridge with better penetration properties. The result was the 38 Smith & Wesson Special, which yielded higher velocities with a heavier 158 grain projectile. As the United States military began to transition to auto-loading semi-auto pistols in the form of the Colt 1911, many police departments continued to use their Smith & Wesson revolvers chambered for 38 Special. In the 1930s, with the increasing popularity of automobiles, many police departments required an even stronger loading for their 38 Special revolvers. They wanted a cartridge that could punch through car doors and still have effective terminal ballistics. This led Smith & Wesson to develop the 38 Special High Speed, also known as the 3844. This cartridge was introduced in three different variations. 158 grain, 150 grain, or a light 110 grain projectile, all offered with either coated lead or metal piercing steel jackets. Optimistic police reviews and positive media attention eventually led Smith & Wesson to push the cartridge even faster, resulting in the iconic 357 Magnum. The 357 Magnum was developed much in the same way as the 3844, and with the same intention, to defeat armor. In the mid-1930s, law enforcement found themselves in the midst of explosive gang shootouts and required more firepower than their standard 38 Special sidearms. The 38 Special, and even the 3844, proved to be insufficient at piercing vehicle doors and body panels, leading law enforcement to begin seeking alternatives. Colt answered this with their 38 Super Automatic, the new high-pressure semi-auto cartridge, but many police departments were wary of adopting semi-autos in favor of their reliable double-action revolvers. Designed in 1934 and introduced just one year later, the 357 Magnum released to raving reviews. The cartridge was designed to be a bit longer than the 38 Special to prevent the accidental loading of 357 Magnum cartridges in a 38 Special revolver. This solved the problem of the 3844 cartridge, which could be chambered in most standard 38 Special revolvers. The 357 Magnum will go on to become one of the most iconic cartridges of all time, with many sidearm pistol cartridges being compared to its very high performance. So just how much difference is there between a 38 Special and the 357 Magnum? Let's see if we can shed some light on that. So now that we know a little bit more about both cartridges, let's go ahead and get started with some testing, put some shots to the chronograph, see what kind of numbers we get. All right, so first up is going to be the 38 Special Plus P. Eleven seventy four. Eleven forty seven. And eleven ninety three. So next up is going to be the three fifty seven Magnum. Fifteen twenty two. Fourteen eighteen. And 1520. Let's crunch the numbers. So we've crunched the numbers, and with our 38 Special, we got an average velocity of 1,171 feet per second. Now that's 211 feet per second more than what was advertised on the box. On the other hand, with our 357 Magnum, we got an average velocity of 1,486 feet per second. Now that's 14 feet per second less than what was advertised on the box, but 315 feet per second more than what we got with the 38 Special. Now this translates into 336 foot pounds of energy for the 38 Special and 613 foot-pounds of energy for the 357 Magnum. That's a difference of 277 foot-pounds of energy. Is that enough to make a difference? Let's see if we can put these rounds to some other tests and figure that out. 
So first up's a water jug test. We've got four water jugs set up. We're gonna shoot the two on the left with the 38 Special and then the two on the right with the 357 Magnum. Hopefully we're gonna be able to see a 277 foot pound advantage for the 357 Magnum. First up's gonna be the 38 Special. So it launched that first one off the table here and it's completely out of water. So I think we went in right here. I almost grazed it, but we completely busted in the side of it here. And then we've just got a 38 caliber hole on the way out. On the second one, still had a little bit of water left in it. But again, we see a similar about three inch cut in the bottle here and then completely blasted out this side here. Let's see how 357 compares. So next up is the 357. Launched both of those off the table. With our first one, we're about three feet back. And uh, you can see it completely busted out both sides. So it looks like this one's gonna be our entrance. We've got an eight inch slash through the entire front of the bottle. And then about the same on the back. With our second one, completely busted out the entire bottom and the side of this one. And still a massive gash out the back. Let's put these rounds to some other tests. So next up, we've got our penetration test. So we've got 10 Pinewood boards followed by a water jug. First up is going to be the 38 Special. Alright, so we got a pretty good center hit. Made it through one, two, three. The hole's getting a little bit bigger by the third one. Completely exploded the fourth one. Seems like we went through the fifth one and stopped. I can feel an ever so slight dent right there. Uh, I'm not seeing the projectile anywhere. So the 38 Special made it through five. Let's see how the 357 compares. Next up is the 357 Magnum. Pretty center hit on the 357. Let's see, we punched through one, two, three, four. Holes are still getting bigger by the fifth one. Looks like we stopped right here in the sixth one after splitting it. Let's see if we can dig this bullet out. Pretty deformed on the inside there. There we go. It's a nice lump of lead. So the 357 Magnum made it into the sixth board, whereas the 38 Special made it to the sixth board. Now, is that a significant difference? We'll let you be the judge. So we've seen these rounds explode some water jugs, and we've seen how they perform in our penetration test. But these are just boards on a table, and those are just jugs of water. Let's see how these rounds perform in ballistic gel. So we've got four layers of denim on the front of the gel block. It's the 20 inch gel block followed by a water jug. I don't think either of these rounds is gonna make it all the way through that 20 inch block, but I guess we'll find out. First up is gonna be the 38 Special. Got to reset our denim. So we've got our denim reset. Let's see what this other round of 38 Special can do. So I'm sure the 38 looked pretty good in slow-mo. Let's try out the 357 Magnum. So we've got our denim reset. Let's hit it with that other round of 357. Man, just all of those ate it up. So with our 38 specials, it looks like we came up just short of the 357 Magnum by about four inches. Let's see, with our 38s, we average out to about 11 inches of penetration. And with our 357 Magnums, 
One made it up to just under the 15 inch mark and one made it just to the 17 inch mark. So that's, that's six inches of penetration. It's a pretty significant difference. With our wound channels, with the 38 Special, we got about an inch and a half inch wound channel. And with the 357 Magnum, we got about a two and a half inch wound channel. Again, I would say that's, that's fairly significant. Let's cut these rounds out of here and see what they look like. And get the 38 Specials from the side here. Feels like an autopsy every time. So there's our two 38 Specials. Looks to be pretty consistent expansion between these two. So with our 357, we really lacerated the side here. You can see just how much damage it had in the gel. Really pulled a lot of that denim in with it. First one mushroomed out pretty well. You can see that flex lock tip just kind of melted to it. Oh, and that second one's just mangled too. Again, the flex lock just melted right to it. So with our 38 specials, we got a lot better expansion, to be honest. The 357s are really mangled, but there's not really all that controlled. You can see in the back where they just kind of mush together, and it's not really controlled expansion, whereas the 38 special nicely peeled back, just like that mushroom shape that you're trying to look for with expanding projectiles. So the 38 special performed fairly well. We got 11 inches of penetration and nearly a one and a half inch wound channel. Now comparing that to the 357's two and a half inch wound channel and up to 17 inches of penetration, that's definitely more for the 357. Let's put these rounds through one more test and come back for some closing thoughts. So we know that the 357 Magnum is more powerful than the 38 Special, but with greater power comes greater recoil. Let's test out the 38 Special and the 357 Magnum and measure the recoil between the two rounds. So as you can probably see, there is a significant jump in recoil from 38 Special Plus P to 357 Magnum. Now remember, we're using a 6 inch barrel python. Whenever you shrink this barrel length down to conceal carry lengths, you are going to see a significant difference in recoil. Maybe enough recoil to make the difference between whether or not you want to carry 38 Special Plus P or 357 Magnum. So with our 357 Magnum, we see higher numbers on paper, greater penetration, and a wider wound channel. So why would anybody carry a 38 Special? Well, it comes down to the recoil impulse. In tiny concealed carry guns, the recoil from a 357 Magnum may deter a lot of people from carrying, whereas the 38 Special being much more comfortable to shoot, people will practice with it more, be more accurate, and they'll be more apt to carry it. That's the whole point of concealed carry is to carry the firearm. Now with 357, you do get higher performance, but like I said, that greater recoil really deters a lot of people from carrying the 357 over the 38 Special. But is this enough difference to make up for the fact that the 357 has more recoil than the 38 Special? We'll let you be the judge. Now if you like our test, make sure you show us. Go down below and hit that thumbs up button, and if you want to see more of this kind of testing, make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell to get notified on future videos. With that, that's all we got for you today. See you next time.